Fellow YouTube denizen and blog radio show host Rich, otherwise known as Shaka Now, has produced a video inventing five myths regarding atheists. It's rather disjointed, but his point is clear. There are things about atheists that need to be exposed. Usually these sorts of videos are a dime a dozen, and I really don't care what sort of delusions a particular individual carries about atheism. But these so-called myths aren't unique. I've heard them before in a variety of places, so watching the video made me realize how pervasive these misconceptions are in the believer's world. Today is Saturday. The kids are off playing on the Nintendo, so I have a bit of time to devote to dismantling these ideas for my own bored amusement. I hope you'll come along. Shockey filmed this while driving his car. It's not bad enough that we have idiots talking on their cell phones while on the road. Now we have rabid Christians making YouTube videos while behind the wheel. What this says about Shockey's common sense should speak volumes. But in any event, he begins his tirade. On this video, I'm going to talk to you about five myths, five myths that um, people perpetuate into our society. So one myth is that religion has caused all the deaths in the world. That's, that's false. That is inaccurate. The deaths that have been caused under atheistic communist regimes uh, far exceed uh, deaths caused by religion such as Islam, etc. I can't stand it. I just can't stand it. Deaths, quote, caused by atheism, end quote, would need to be done in the name of atheism. Deaths caused by theism, by the same token, need to have been done in the name of some god. Clearly, there is no contest. Theists like to point to Stalin or Mao and claim that deaths in these leftist communistic regimes were a direct result of atheism. In other words, that the mass killings were done because of atheism and not some political motivation. Clearly, this isn't true. Atheism does not boast wholesale genocide, as does books like the Bible in which God's people are ordered to massacre entire cities of people from men and women down to children and livestock. However, clearly murder is something human beings in general, atheists and theists alike, work to control. Unfortunately, there are going to be some atheists and some theists who will nonetheless murder. But admittedly, those with bombs strapped to their chests often have visions of holy rewards in their minds. So that's the first myth uh, that, you know, the number one thing that causes death is religion. It's actually atheism. The second thing is that Jesus Christ never claimed to be the Son of God. We'll talk Asserting that Jesus never claimed to be the Son of God. Well, I hate to burst your bubble, Shucky, but I personally don't care. Just as I don't care if the guy begging for coins on the street corner claims to be God. And I think most other atheists would agree with me. The third thing is that atheism is just a lack of belief in God. That's, that's a myth. It is anti-God and hostility towards God. We all know it. No, we don't all know it because it's not true. There is nothing implicit in the definition of atheism that says one holding that position must attack theists, just as there is nothing implicit in the definition of theism that demands one be a self-righteous, arrogant motorcyclist who attacks atheists. Atheism is merely lacking belief in God. It doesn't demand any sort of behavior. Theism is belief in a God and it alone doesn't demand any sort of behavior either. It isn't until one gets into which deities that are worshipped does one start to find demands on behavior. Another myth is that there's all types of proof and evidence that atheism is accurate and correct. Proof is uh, an evidence of atheism isn't worth the value of a bucket of spit or another bucket that <laughs> rhymes like that. So that's the, the fourth myth. Lacking belief in something doesn't require proof and evidence other than the proof and evidence of the lack of belief itself. And since I personally lack belief in God, that makes me an atheist, and thus there is your proof and evidence right there. What Shaka is probably trying to say is that atheism lacks a foundation upon which to positively assert that there is no God. It may surprise him to learn that I, and most atheists I know, would agree with him. It's not that we say no God can, does, or ever could exist. We say that, first of all, the probability of God's existence, specifically the kind of God folks like Shaka try to defend, is infinitesimally low. 
It's so low that one is more secure philosophically, scientifically, and logically accepting that no such thing in fact exists. Secondly, all the millennia of efforts from theists to convince us of their God is a miserable failure. How long have these guys had to convince us of the truth and value of their position? Since recorded history and beyond, and yet they still fail to convince a good number of people of their fantasy. When it comes to theology, one is reminded of the old saying, you can fool some of the people some of the time, all of the people some of the time, but not all of the people all of the time. When science stumbles upon a truth, however, it may be slow to convince some people of the power of the discovery, but by and large, only a relatively short time elapses before everyone is on board. Science dares to go where angels fear to tread. In other words, science picks up where theology leaves off. Theology looks at the world and sees the miracle of creation. It doesn't ask how the world is the way it is. It merely says God did it and is satisfied with that. Science, however, asks why and how and is not satisfied until it has found an answer. For example, It was entirely natural that early man should think of his home, our earth, as being a fixed and rigid body in the center of the universe. But men could not believe that the solid continents made out of rock could move through the solid ocean floors. And it took some time to understand how it was that continents might move about. But understand we did, and today no reputable scientist or educated person disbelieves in continental drift, which was fully formed only in 1912. In less than a century, everyone went from being a total skeptic of such an absurd idea to accepting the indisputable evidence. Theology, with all its time to convince us of their God, still can only fool some of the people, some of the time. Fifth myth is evolution. If you go down here at shockandow.net and you click shock radio, the top radio show that pops up, we go through over 30 different errors and lies of evolution. Now I want you guys to know something. Before the radio show I had all types of um, evolutionists uh, calling up, let's see if this truck hits me, and they're like, well I'm going to take notes and I'm going to go ahead and tell you about all your errors. Not one evolutionist has emailed me any errors on that show. Not one. I told you. I told you! Ah, ah the stupid, it hurts. Yes, I listened to that blog radio program and had to endure the first 15 minutes of preaching and general bashing of atheism and evolution in general before Shaka and his co-hosts ever named one so-called lie of evolution. And even then they bumbled and started by poo-pooing the Big Bang, which has nothing to do with evolution. Then they went on to make the fallacy of appeal to popularity by stating that 53% of Americans reject evolutionary theory. Lies linking atheism and communism, lies about Richard Dawkins, and then after another torturous 20 minutes, they kept talking about the Big Bang and issues in cosmology, including the dusty creationist canard about the direction in which Uranus spins. And then finally, finally, almost 45 minutes into this excruciating blog show, they finally mentioned what they believe destroys evolution. Ready for it? The cell. Yes, the cell. It's just too darn complex. Now, where have I heard that before? If you know how complicated a single cell is, go on Google and just look up the cell and look at all its parts, you know, the nucleus and all, all that goes into a cell. And then I want you to imagine blowing up a single cell to the scale of a human being. So imagine a very large single cell. And what you'll notice is a lot of moving parts, a lot of intricate working parts. Would you ever be able to believe that a cell, a big cell, could ever form by chance? It said when you take your material from Venom Fang X. God, I'm glad I'm an atheist.